for more on U.S. drone policy, we're joined by CBS News senior national security analyst Juan Zarate. He's in our Washington bureau. As a former security advisor in the Bush administration, the George W. Bush administration, he's still bound by some laws of secrecy. So there are aspects of this story we can't talk about with Juan, but good morning, Juan. Good morning, Anthony. What is the intelligence basis that you need to order a strike like this, Juan? Well, the president has ordered a near certainty standard with respect to potential civilian casualties, non-combatants, but also with respect to the targets. And so that means, Anthony, that those who are looking for al-Qaeda senior leaders and targets have to compile enough information to assure themselves that they are hitting an al-Qaeda target that is significant uh, at that near certainty standard. So you create, in essence, an evidentiary file that allows you to make that decision and to give uh, whoever the, the official is who's making the decision, enough confidence that you're hitting the right target. I want to ask you about this statement from the family, because they said while they praise certain personnel members in the FBI, they said overall other parts of the government, the support was somewhat disappointing. What, is, what does that comment really mean? Are the CIA and the FBI, are they working together? Is there integration? There is integration, Vanita, but there are challenges in communicating with the families. And I think the U.S. government has dropped the ball on occasion uh, in terms of how they communicate consistently with the, with the families. And this is a complaint you've heard not just from the Weinstein family, but from the families affected by the Syrian hostage crises as well. The challenge for the U.S. government is they can't reveal everything they know that they're doing to try to secure the release of, of the family members. On the other hand, family members want more information and deserve it. And so there's a real tension there uh, that's hard to bridge. But I think that's going to be one part of this ho hostage policy review that will see some changes in the coming weeks. Juan, well, there's, there's obviously been a lot of debate about the drone program from the beginning. Does its effectiveness against al Qaeda make it essentially, make this a necessary risk? Unfortunately, Anthony, I think there is a, a real balance here between the risk of a action and the risk of inaction. And there is n never going to be perfect information about everything happening on the ground in places like Western Pakistan or Yemen or Somalia or North Africa, where Al Qaeda is taking advantage of the safe haven and where we do not have a physical presence. And so information will never be perfect. Uh, and the reality is that these kinds of targeted strikes have taken very senior members of Al Qaeda off the battlefield and I think have kept America safe. Quickly, Juan, I just want to ask you, do you think of this as a new tactic that they are actually taking hostages, Al Qaeda? Well, it's something to think about, Vanita. Uh, good question. Al Qaeda has certainly been taking hostages. That's not new for them. In fact, they've made it an industry in North Africa to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. But to have hostages like these with co-located with senior Al Qaeda leaders in Western Pakistan is somewhat unusual. And you may wonder if they're starting to use hostages not just as bait for ransom and uh, propaganda pawns, but perhaps also as human shields. Thank you so much for your insight. Juan Zarate in Washington this morning.